Guys, come over here. I'm worried. Ivy hasn't moved all day. She's okay. She's mad. I think she's cold. Mike, can you grab the, the light? I got you. This thing is hotter than the sun. Oh. It's so hot. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You think that this is what she needs? You're right, Shay. That's not enough. I got an idea. I'm going to turn the heat up in the building. Hey, What's hey, that? hey. Whoa. What are you doing? Ivy's cold. Listen, guys. The one thing that you definitely have to understand is that reptiles do not need excessive heat. Reptiles can typically afford cooler temperatures than hotter temperatures. Hot temperatures for reptiles are a killer. And today we're going to talk about the things that could potentially kill your snake. Heat would be one of them. You see, snakes are actually ectothermic. They can't control their temperature. Whatever their blood is, that's the temperature of the air around. If you have a snake that needs to be 88 degrees on a hot spot, so the hottest it should be is 88 degrees. On the cool side, maybe it's 82 or maybe even 80. But if you have that as 100, 105 degrees, 115 degrees, you gotta remember that reptile is gonna be 115 degrees. And oftentimes that's too much heat for a reptile to keep. And it could potentially kill it over time. It dehydrates, it overheats. It definitely is something that happens. So too much heat, not good for reptiles. And uh, by the way, guys, a little uh, extra bonus for you. Probably don't stare into a really bright light. Who said that? I can't see nothing. You may notice that the Reptarium van doesn't have any windows in the back. Well, that is by design because I'm telling you what, almost anyone that does reptiles has experienced this. If you've done it for any length of time, you could kill your snake in the car from overheating. I'm going to tell you a story of what happened to me when I was younger. I actually had a guy that had a pair of adult Brazilian rainbow boas that he asked to me to take to a reptile show I was going to in Chicago. He wanted $1,000 for that pair of rainbow boas. Really a good, decent price. So I went ahead and took it out to Chicago, but I was driving in a Cavalier, a Chevy Cavalier. Similar to this, windows in the back and stuff like that. Well, I had the snakes in the back. It was about 80 degrees out. I had air conditioning. I thought everything was fine. Well, sure enough, I was about three quarters through the six hour drive. I pulled over for gas and guess what? The heat from the sun going through the window overheated those Brazilian rainbow bows and sadly they died. And I tell you what, I was crushed for two reasons. Number one, I was crushed because I had killed these snakes because I didn't know and I learned a very valuable lesson. But secondly, I was so crushed I didn't want to tell the guy, his name was Mike, that I killed this snake. So literally, I came back and I just told him I sold them. I gave $1,000 out of my pocket because I just knew that if he entrusted me with the snakes, then I made this absolutely rookie mistake. I would be devastated, right? And I just didn't want him to know. And to this day, I've never actually told him until now. If he watches this video, he's going to find out. The fact is, you've got to be careful about heat, especially if you're in a car. And that sun is baking through that window because that window is going to heat up like a magnifying glass and you can absolutely kill your snake. Don't make that mistake. So don't just assume that your cage is the right temperature because you've got a 100 watt ball. You could do one of two things. You can get a heat gun like this. Ivy's on one of the warm spots of the cage right here. And I'm just going to shoot her really quick. She's about 85 degrees. It can get actually about 90 degrees over here at the high spot. Then the other side of the cage, you want to have a cool spot so she can go to the cool side to thermoregulate, right? That side is 82 degrees. It all depends on what species it is. But you want about 90 degrees hot spot for an anaconda. You want about 80, 82 degrees on the cold side. And of course, she can get in the water too. So it's really important to make sure you monitor your temperature so you don't have a situation where your 100 degree hot spot is 120 degrees degrees and you're like oh it just feels warm enough because that could be a detriment to your snake's survival all right guys i think we need to make juliet the largest snake in the world all right easy. world record talking feeding every day 30 pound pigs what do you guess that's why i think if we 30, 30 25 pounds. every day I okay mean, 365 times 25 is well like, that's a lot of math that's a lot of pounds. yeah that would make sense another thing that can definitely shorten your snake's life and even kill your snake is by overfeeding it it's really detrimental to a snake to get too much food because they build up a fatty liver and it shortens their life if you're feeding your snake on a seven to 10 day period, or maybe even with big snakes, you might want to back down to 10 to 14 days because their metabolism slows down so much. You want to feed them enough to keep them plump, but you don't want to feed them enough to get them fat because a fat snake is going to lose years off its life. A giant reticulated python can literally live 30, 35, even 40 years. But if you overfeed that reticulated python, you're lucky to get 10 or 12 years out so of it. So you literally shorten your snake's life by like a third by oh. overfeeding it. So don't overfeed your snake. Know the size meal and the metabolism is. And remember when snakes are younger, they can eat more often. When they get older, their metabolism metabolism slows down, you want to feed less often, or smaller meals to keep them healthy. I always talk about a lean and mean snake is way better than a big fat snake. And when some snakes is even more detrimental, you got to know your species, right? Because an emerald tree boa or green tree python, they don't move around a lot, so they don't metabolize nearly enough. So if you were to feed this animal, say every seven days, it may actually bind up. The rule of thumb really with green tree pythons and emerald tree boas is that you feed them, once they go to the bathroom, you feed them again. You don't feed them until they go to the bathroom at least one time. That means that these guys can sometimes only eat maybe once every Every three weeks. Hey. Alright guys, it is set two nights of a day not to take the snakes out, so let's take exactly. them everywhere. Tuna. God, I really want ice cream today. It is pretty hot out. Oh, you dude, think can we, we can do that? Dairy Queen? Dairy Queen. Queen. I want Cold Queen. Stone. Let's go to Dairy I Queen. I want Minchie. Let's, let's do all Minchies. three. Okay. Who and wants frozen yogurt? The lions are playing. The lions are playing? Uh, I think it's the tiger. That's the wrong cat. Either way, can we just go yeah, to a game? Yeah, let's yeah, go to we'll the, go game, to the and game. Then we can go to the park and then we can go to Dave and Buster. Dave and Buster! What about Cedar Point? 
Oh! Oh yeah, and I, there's this new book I want to rent at the library. Okay, well, then cool. We'll make a stop at the library. Yeah, let's go. That sounds fun. And that's my next point that could kill your snake is stress. You don't want to overstress your animals, and every animal is a little bit different. Gemma, ironically enough, has been handled her whole life, so she's pretty used to it. She could probably do the majority of the things that these guys wanted to do with her, but not every snake is that way, to be honest with you. You always want to be cautious when you're actually overstressing an animal. Again, depends on the animal. Here at the Reptarium, these animals are handled all the time. So they're used to being handled, so it's not as stressful. For but you know, you got to start slow and work your way through. You don't want to take a snake that's never been handled and start handling it 10, 12 hours a day because it can stress out the way you really know if an animal is starting to stress out if it stops eating, right? When you go into a speeding strike, it's typically something that means that the animal is stressed out. Now, don't get me wrong, depends on the species. All pythons can go two or three months on a strike and not be stressed at all. You got to know your animal, you got to know your feeding response for your animal. But stress can definitely be a killer, so you got to be careful. Are we going to the game still? What about Dairy Queen? Guys, just put Gemma back. <sighs> okay. <laughs> what are you doing? That was you, you stepped on my foot and then I couldn't move. Guys, I'm stressed now. Hey guys, some snakes like take for instance Night Fury here that has a giant lung. Another time you don't want to be handling them is after they feed, obviously. But he just doesn't like to be handled that much. So taking him out on occasion isn't a problem for him. But if I was to take him out the same way we take Sunrise or Perdita or Al or any of our other big snakes that people hold all the time, he would probably stress out. And that's why we don't take him out very much. But what happens is they stress and they go off of food. That reduces their immune system, which means that they're more susceptible to disease or viruses. So as you're stressing that animal, you're actually putting its life in jeopardy. So Noah was actually on vacation the last five or six days, so come back uh, a little bit of changes. Now we're starting to get the wall done. A little bit. Essentially, you know, you get the idea of this wood wall here obviously isn't gonna be here. That's just a temporary wall to kind of keep things secure. The windows will be here. You'll be able to see straight through all the way into the aquarium. These are actually pillars that have to stay for structural support. You've got the steel that's above to keep the roof on and stuff like that. So after this wall is done and some steel has to be put in over here to get the rest of the wall out. The next thing that happens probably next week is that we pull the foundation. Cement gets poured, the wall comes out. Then the next thing once the cement is poured is they come back with the actual framing and they'll frame out all this stuff for all the windows and everything else like that and then put the roof on and then after that the windows actually come out and the pond gets put in and then the outside is basically done don't have an aquarium guys when was the last time we fed sunfire god uh, three four six months, months? i don't know something like that oh like five months ago i think that five and a half five and a half six is the same thing That's she's good she's good yeah what? Again, you definitely don't want to underfeed your snake. I talk about overfeeding your snake being a killer, but underfeeding your snake can also be a killer. Again, the same thing I talked about. If they go off of food because you're not feeding them, they can actually reduce their immune system. It can be really bad. Again, feed your snake appropriately. Now, again, I know I talked about food strike. All pythons go on strike three, four months a year sometimes. You know, Gemma went 15 months without food and she was completely fine. Listen, reptiles can go a long period of time without food, but if they are wanting to eat, you don't want to starve them, right? You want to get that food going when they do. You know, whether it's seven to 10 days, 10 to 14 days, depending on the size and the age of the animal. You want to make sure you're feeding the appropriate amount. Not too much, not too little. Are you ready? She wants to go She's swimming. Be so cool put in this enclosure. In. Just put her in. Snakes love turtles. Yeah. yeah. Dude, they're going to be besties. And yep. look how much like water she has. She can go swimming whenever she wants. Wow. To get out. Well, guys, once again, these guys are proving that they need a little bit of more expertise when it comes to keeping reptiles. Setup is super important, right? You got to know the species that you're working with and what they actually need to survive. Not every animal needs a 90 degree hot spot. Not every animal needs an 80 degree cool spot. So get to know the species you're dealing with and then the environment they need. Do they need a high humidity? Do they need low humidity? What's the temperatures they need? Proper setup is the number one thing. Once you set up a snake or a reptile in the proper setup, then the ease of care is super easy with husbandry and keeping it really healthy. But you have to make sure that you have the absolute right setup. I tell you what, do your research. Make sure you spend the extra money on the setup because once you have that animal, Animal set up, it's gonna dry for you. Don't ever put a corn snake in a pond full of turtles. Not a good one. Guys, look at what I got from the reptile show. No one come check it out. Yes. Is another bull python, dude? Yeah, I mean, I just picked it up, but it's that's like, I got Yeah, it's a pie. Right? I know exactly what you should do this. Mike, come on, we need your doing? keys. Yeah, 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 we gotta put it in with Noah. Besties, yeah. a bull python goes for the ball python. Perfect. Duh. Here we go. Ooh, there we go. Like that. Ah. so pretty. And look yeah. at the colors. Yeah, you look so. You can see all the kinds. Wow. Mike, can you give me that snake? I just got it. 
I know you just got it. This brings me up to the next thing that can really cause your snakes a lot of problem and even cause your snakes to die and maybe kill a bunch of other animals if you're not careful, and that would be quarantine. It's very important when you first get a new animal to not just throw it in with a bunch of other animals because if it's carrying some virus or bacteria or fungus or something like that, it can spread it, right? And the thing is, is that if you bring an animal in that has something that's a nido virus, which is very common in ball pythons, you can literally wipe out your entire collection of animals. So when we get animals here at the Reptar, we always keep them for 60 to 90 days off-site, quarantining, make sure that we monitor their health. Once they get a 100% health checkup after 90 days, that's when we typically move them over into the Reptar. And you should do the same thing with your pet snakes. So I can't put my new snake in there? No, you can't. As a matter of fact, I'm taking your new snake. Hmm. He's like your new snake. Dang it. This is too clean. You can see the alligators. That's not supposed to be that way. We're supposed to make brackish it dirty. water, dude. Not, okay. not brackish dirt. Brackish is salt and fresh. Okay, come on. Well, let's oh. make it dirty. Let's get buckets of dirt and we're going to dump it in. Okay. Right. I'll sit here and I'll swear at it. No, can you open that up for me? Yeah, yeah. the trash. It should be pretty dirty already. Guys, what the heck are you doing over here? We're, we're making a we're swamp. Making we're dirty, swamp. like the Everglades. Swamp water. You can see the alligators. I think that brings me to my last topic, which is husbandry. Husbandry is very important. It's much like setup, right? We talked about the proper setup. Once you have that proper setup, obviously cleaning and keeping fresh water is really important. Whatever your enclosure is, you got to make sure it's clean and sanitary because if it's not, infections can happen, fungal infections can happen, you know, all kinds of bad things can happen to your animal. Maybe it doesn't shed properly. All kinds of stuff. So make sure your humidity is right. Make sure your cage is clean. Make sure there's fresh water in every single enclosure every single day. It's very important. Husbandry is something that you have to keep up on a daily basis. You can't just walk away from a reptile for a week and think that it's going to be okay. If you don't do your proper husbandry, you can affect the health of your animal and we don't want that. I hope you guys learned some things in today's video what not to do. These guys certainly know what not to do. There's no doubt about that. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, so hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, I'll sit here and I'll swear at it.